Okay, here we go. Using nutritional information, lesson B, and uh, we briefly touched on eating disorders during the um, during the last presentation. And what I'm really looking to do today um, is explain a little bit more about some of those disorders, um, what they look like, how can they present themselves, and what you should really look out for as a trainer, um, so that you can make sure that your clients are nice and safe, and that we've got no dis dis eating disorders going on um, and that if you do encounter something you'll know exactly what it is and how to deal with it. So eating disorders are physiological disorders that manifest in eating behaviours. So they are something that's happened within the body and the way that they present themselves is through or by the way in which people eat. and. There's an increase in prevalence, so that means that they are, you know, eating disorders are becoming more more widespread. And I'm sure you've also have seen stories on the news and in the media and in different magazines and whatnot where you've seen a story about anorexia or bulimia or even more commonly sort of the you know, on the, on, when I'm presenting this is in the news quite a lot now muscle dysmorphia. Um, and we'll have a look at what what all of those are and the. Eating disorders are quite commonly associated with over-exercising or being addicted to exercise. So, and I'm not saying this is not by any means a categorical statement, but it can be the case if you've got or you see particular people in the gym and they're training sort of morning and night, they're training very hard, they're very addicted to their training. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they have got an eating disorder, not by any means, but it could be a potential sign that they have. In particular, if they are looking particularly over, uh, sorry, underweight um, and malnourished, they they could be someone who has got a an eating disorder. And the first one I'm going to pick up on is anorexia nervosa, or more commonly known just as anorexia, and Anorexia is characterised by a persistent refusal to maintain a healthy weight. So people who are, you know, they refuse to come up to what we would class as a as a healthy weight and um, denial and, and an effort to um, disguise the behaviour and result in weight loss and beware of jumping to conclusions just become someone who I am appears thin. So really what we're looking at with the the anorexic um, sort of area or, or population, whichever term you'd like to use, are people who are very underweight. Um, if we're going to be putting them through a vigorous or difficult workouts, they've probably not got too much carbohydrate or too much energy stores there and they may well get tired quite easily. Um, they'll probably want to push themselves um, psychologically because you know they think or they have the opinion that they are they are overweight and they they refuse to get to that healthy weight like we've discussed. Um, and you know you'd be able to tell if someone was anorexic, you'd be able to have a look at their food diary. Uh, you'll see that food intake would be very low. Um, also, from the way that they speak, when they speak about food, they'll say, you know, just because I'm thin, it doesn't mean that I've not eaten this, 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 and this. Just because I'm thin doesn't mean that I can't do this. Um, and they might try and disguise the behaviour as well. So, oh no, but yeah, I did have this. And, oh yeah, but actually, oh, I, did, I did take that. You know, that's those are the characteristics of people who we would class as anorexic. We also have bulimia um, nervosa, so someone who is bulimic. And this is characterized by binging and purging behavior. Um, weight may fluctuate or appeal normal. So someone could be bulimic and have a normal weight. And vomiting causes symptoms in mouth and esophagus and may include the use of laxatives or emetics. So, these people, um, are, I think you would all probably know what bulimia is, but they'll be making themselves sick. Um, 
as a way of essentially getting rid of food from the body and because they they binge on food and they feel bad that they've binged on the food, they'll then make themselves sick. Um, and that essentially is what is what bulimia is. Um, you know, it's people will go on a binge, I'll eat this, 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 this and this, and they might go all out and then they'll make themselves sick after. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that like, some people do it after just a normal meal. Um, and anorexia and bulimia are, or can be quite closely related with one another. Binge eating. So, characterised by binging without the necessarily purging of bulimia. So, essentially, that you know, they're just overeating all the time, um, but they're not being sick afterwards. They're just eating and eating and eating, and it can lead to being overweight, um, which, you know, you'd expect with that calorie surplus every day. Um, it is increasingly common, but it can be hard to identify. It's not just cravings or occasional overeating. It is... It, Binge eating is eating sort of mega, mega amounts of calories every single day and sort of, I wouldn't say people know that they're doing it, but they do have an awareness of what they're eating is not particularly good for them. It's not sort of like um, what you can see sometimes, you know, if someone's having a couple of diet, a couple of cans of Coke a day, maybe a chocolate bar and some crisps with their lunch and they weren't quite realising that all these calories were adding up, that's not binge eating. That's just an education issue where they don't quite understand what they're eating. However, if someone's eating a foot English every morning, if they're then going out and, and getting lunch from the local supermarket and they're going, you know, Coke, crisps, chocolate bars, snacking on biscuits during the day, going home at night and eating something that resembles what's on the slide there, then that's binge eating. Disordered eating patterns, so not all disordered eating patterns have a name, but mm. you know, it could be something like we have something called orthorexia, which is the pursuit of a perfect diet. So that's when people push themselves, push themselves, push themselves, keep looking for the perfect diet, you know. They're obsessed with it, they can never have what we'd call a cheap meal or eat something that may be classed as unhealthy, um, and that can lead to sort of psychological issues. Mm. Bigorexia or muscle dysmorphia can be associated with, with steroid abuse, but muscle dysmorphia really is when someone is in half decent shape and, or, you know, they, they keep telling themselves, oh, I don't look good, I look fat, you know, this is horrible, my arms are too thin, my legs are too big. Um, that's what muscle dysmorphia is. When in fact they do actually look like a healthy person, they actually look quite good, but they keep telling themselves that they, they don't. That's bigorexia or muscle dysmorphia. And all of these, all these eating disorders that we've touched on here today, they're outside, outside our scope of practice, all right? They need special support from a psychologist, dietitian, or GP. And there is a document that's been brought out by the ISRM. Um, mm -hmm. You can look it up online if you need to, and it will give you some guidance around what to do in a bit more detail on, um, on these different issues. So give it a Google if you need to, see if you can find it. But that document is around and there's other publications as well from the NHS, etc. that will support you. So, hope that's made sense. I hope you're now clear, um, a bit more clear on what the eating disorders are and how to look out for them. Um, and keep going. We've only got a few more presentations left and you'll be ready for your exam. <laughs>